Welcome back to this World of Warcraft Let's Play. You're with Sambo and joining us as always is our now level 29 Worgen Mage, Seraphis. Say good day, Seraphis. Our fates are intertwined. That's right, our fates are indeed intertwined as we're here in the Thistlefir Hold. And of course, if you joined us in our last episode, you'll know we were wandering around here trying to find these troll charms, which we did. We got eight out of eight of those. And of course, what's up next? Well, we've got to find this guy here, Dal Bloodclaw. He's the old leader of the Thistlefir Fur Bogs. Gosh, it's a mouthful. And he's too far gone now. The trolls have basically corrupted him. And we've got to go take him out. So that's the first task for us. And of course, if we look at our map you can see here we are right up the top here in the Thistlefir hold we've got to go back down to Astronar and Handin which is what what's uh, well what do we got the troll charms there is what we're handing in and then we're going to make our way over here to the Thunder Peak which we didn't make in the last episode we ran out of time and we're going to try and find a loon's tear but first things first we've got to take down Dal Bloodclaw the corrupted old leader of the Thistlefir Fir Bolgs Boy, it's a mouthful and a half. Seriously, folks, you try saying that over and over again. Easy to get tongue-tied. There we go. We've got ourselves a totem already, which we have to dispatch. There we go. Nice and easy. And I can see glistening over in the background there some tin, so we'll definitely want that. We'll take out the fur bulb that's in the way there whoops managed to spaz my mouse out and unfortunately face the wrong way which mean our cast didn't go because of course you have to be facing the right direction for the cast to actually complete all right let's grab this tin before someone else does there we go lovely four tin ore for us all right wonder if we can sneak past these guys maybe Maybe we can't. This one here, level 22. And once again, now that we've leveled up, this level 22 mob is showing up as grey in its portrait, which means no XP for us. But that's okay. Same with this one down here, level 22. Opening up with the good old frost bolt, following up with a fireball and then a scorch. Already down to under halfway in terms of his health there. Let's get rid of the totem. Jolly good. <clears throat> now let's also get rid of this roach. Oh, we also killed a rat. Again, for the quest in terms of... Uh, rather, not the quest. In terms of our achievement for killing all the nasty pests. Pest control, I believe, is what it's called. All right, let's clear out an area down here because I'm pretty sure this is where Del Bloodclaw is. In fact, there he is there. You can see in the background as I hover over him. You can see that the quest name comes up as well. It says zero of one, of course. Get rid of that pesky totem. And goodbye, rat. All right, there he is out in the misty waters there on his own little rock as we grab this tin, of course. Money, money, money. All right, let's see what, what sort of a dent we can put in him. In fact, let's bring out a pet to help us hit P, bring up our companion screen here. And who have we got? Panda and Monk. You will do nice. We haven't seen you for a while. Aww. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> All right. Del Blood Claw, your time is nigh. And you can see he's got a whole pet load of health there, 1,302. So I might just freeze him in place so that he can't hit us. And the good thing is our arcane missiles have uh, procced. We can use those. Might also just blink out of the way. Yeah. And there we go. Nicely done. We're below half health, so it was a bit nasty, but nah, never mind. Blood Claws collection we now have in our bags. There you go. The crudely fashioned chest holds a wide variety of stolen charms and trinkets. That is what we have to take back up here at the exit of the den so it's now time to leave the den i think we can actually leave this way there's multiple ways out of this den pretty sure this was one of those paths those branching paths that we saw on the way in we'll soon find out i guess oh good and we got ourselves some more healing potions there you can see uh, restoring 320 health that we've got in our health bar. We've got five of those. They really do come in handy when you're just down too low and you haven't got time to actually sit down and have a drink. Um, or if you haven't got any other instant 
healing abilities, then that health pot is going to be a lifesaver. Trust me. Right, and he's giving us XP, of course, because it's level 23, and it's within six levels of where we are, which is the magic number, by the way, for whether or not a mob gives us XP or not. So whether or not they're green, you can see there, level 22 is grey. Level 23 will be green, and therefore XP giving. Right, so just fighting our way out of the den, we'll be back out into the big wide world of Ashenvale Forest, where we get to hand in that Dell Bloodclaw quest for a whole heap of XP. And we'll give the old totem a whack there once again. All you need to do to initiate melee combat, as long as you're in range, is right click on something and you'll auto attack them. Also, don't forget we've got our uh, wand here, which is our first ability. I'll do that now. It's not not very much DPS, but it's handy because it doesn't use mana. So that if you are out of mana, you can always use your wand. It's like a great little fallback. Stop you from running away and going and getting your friends. Right, and here's another roach. For some reason, there's a great amount of satisfaction to be had in killing roaches with arcane explosion. Don't ask me why, there just is. <laughs> I think that's been ever since the vanilla days everyone loves. Good old arcane explosion. Very handy in an instance, of course, when you have to burn down a whole bunch of mobs, and you need that AOE. Right, here we go, our hand in via Dark Snout, and of course this was for Dal Bloodclaw. Well, the future of Thistlefur rests upon your shoulders, Worgen. As Pandoran Monk goes nuts with his Bruce Lee impersonation there. What was done had to be done, as our leader Dal's sickness from the troll charms was destroying us. It was better for the health and dignity of the tribe that this was you, outsider. This way there'll be no civil war amongst us and we'll easily find new leadership, hopefully one that does not have a tendency to so easily trust outsiders. Perhaps I'm guilty of this as well. Here, allow me to repay the debt we owe you as we part our ways forever. And of course, we want this Zoram Gar cloak. So we'll take that. Thank you very much. Got a big chunk of XP. You can see down the bottom here, we're already one quart in to our XP bar, meaning we're nearly, uh, what are we, three, three quarters to go till level 30. All right, let's equip our normal gear. There we go, and we'll swap out if we hold shift, of course, comparing the tooltips there. Plus nine armor, plus three hit rating, and we don't lose our intellect. So I'm gonna right click and equip that to save it. Yes, please. There we go. Now let's just equip our fishing gear for a moment. Do we have a cape? Don't think we do, no. All right, so we'll re-equip our combat gear. There we go, all done. Oh, and look at that, we've got ourselves a tin vein as Vista spazzes out in the background. Sorry about the frame rate there. All right, now one other thing that we haven't done, and that is, of course, look at our talent tree. So let's do that now. Bring up uh, the talent tree with the N button, of course. And you can see here we've got a few that we can actually spend, and we've actually opened up a new uh, row of them. And this row is Presence of Mind. When activated, your next mage spell with a casting time of less than 10 seconds becomes an instant cast spell. Now that is a very handy ability to have later on. Not so much now in the early days where it's a little bit easier, but later on, boy is it great, because it means that some of our big casts here don't actually need to be cast. Uh, once we actually activate Presence of Mind. It's fantastic. Got another one here, a Missile Barrage. Your Arcane Missile spell will fire its missiles every 0.6 seconds. So that reduces uh, the amount of time that it actually takes to cast the missiles. So it'll increase the frequency of them. So that's a good one to get as well. And then on the back here, we've got Prismatic Cloak, reduces all damage taken by 2% and reduces the fade time of your invisibility spell, which we'll get later on by one second. Now remembering too, we've still got these other ones we can put points into. Invocation, you gained a 5% damage bonus for eight seconds after successfully interrupting a spell. Again, more of use later on. Improved Counter Spell, your Counter Spell also silences the target for two seconds. That's quite handy, I must admit. Or Improved Blink, we can increase the speed by 35% for three seconds after casting the blink spell. Again, kind of handy in PvP. So I'd say we probably want the missile barrage one at this point. So we'll learn that. Are you sure you want to learn these talents? Yes, we are. And there we go. We get our next talent point at level 31. All right, time to mount up, I believe. 
as we head back down to well maybe what we'll do actually is we'll follow this trail down here down behind hell screams watch which is a bit dangerous but that's fun and we'll make our way to here to thunder peak where we actually have to find a loon's tear and of course this is a brand new area for us because last time i was here and if you've uh, been playing it in the old days watching from home you'll know that that earth uh, the earthquake the volcano was never there in the old days look at this the forest just opening up there isn't it fantastic such an amazing looking forest i love roaming around in here like i said many times before i would just wander around in here even if there weren't any quests to be had just to see what interesting things we could find what interesting sights we could see lots and lots of fun all right looks like this is the pathway here you can just see them made out there the well-worn tra uh, trails in the grass always a good thing to do is follow those look at that look how far the forest stretches off in the distance there just absolutely amazing and look at the emerald green sky when we do find a clearing in the forest cam canopy it's just so pretty isn't it love it right now what's up here let's have a look do we need to go up there no we're a bit early for a turn off trying to figure out the easiest way now that there is hell screams watch i believe you can see there's a grunt up there and by the way again on his portrait you can see that there is a pvp symbol on him that means he is pvp enabled which means if we attack him we will be pvp enabled and that means we're fair game for any of the opposing factions. so do be careful when that happens Look at the size of these spiders goodness me all right I can see, start to see some flames appearing, which tells me we're in the right area. Where do we need to go? Probably over there somewhere. Let's just wander up that way. We'll grab this spider. Remains of Iris Lake. All right, there you go. There's the answer to my question. Will the lake be the same as it was? Because, of course, in the old days, before the cataclysm, you used to be able to actually come here to the lake. I'm pretty sure it was for the same quest actually and now it sounds like it's going to be the remains of them so this is very interesting and up here we've got a singed shambler now these shamblers are a model of uh, mob that you'll uh, come across in later parts oh look up there there's magmathar really don't know what part of this he's got to ha play in it i guess he caused all of this destruction these singed shamblers here quite often you get fen shamblers in places like that uh, rather in mobs like that in places like the wetlands also in Angoro Crater you'll see these type of monsters and so this may well be the first time you've seen them here look at that they did something nasty to us there some kind of AOE effect went off just around us there that was what their big flash was right, another one and these unfortunately aren't giving us any XP either being level 21 but that's okay wow okay it was kind of like a fiery moon fire that was I'm not sure what that spell was just quickly checking my steam here whoops all right as we come into this fiery area the remains of iris lake don't tell me that the lake isn't anywhere here to be found at all actually there's what we're after i think soot covered elune's tear oh hang on this is where the lake used to be oh my lord okay this looks a lot different let me tell you wow okay as we get up closer i'll show you where the lake was it's all coming back to me now. Whoa, that's a big spell that he's casting there. <clears throat> and I can see something glowing up here. What is it? Oh, a soot covered Elune's tear. Okay, so there's more than one of them. All right, there we go. We've got one of one. Now, this here. Wow. Okay, that used to be that little dip there, that ditch where those shamblers are. That used to be water. And I remember you used to have to swim out, basically, swim right here where there's no longer any water and you'd swim out to this little island if we can get up there we go and we'd collect something from here this was a tiny little island out in the middle of the water gosh it's certainly a lot different now and i guess that magmathar is to blame for all that anyway we need to head ourselves back to astronaut and look what i've spotted up in the distance there a tin vein will definitely stop past that pick that up of course money 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 for the auction house never passing up an opportunity for these higher level ores and of course the next one that we want are silver if we open our smelting here you can see that these are all giving us gray uh, so they're not going to give us any skill ups if we do smelt them even silver and silver is what we want next and that'll be kind of in the higher level zone so we're a bit behind the curve in that respect but it's no problem still having lots of fun let's go to the top of this little peak here have a good look around oh look at that okay that's warsong 
uh, uh, what is it? Not Warsong Gulch. Warsong Lumber Camp. Warsong Gulch, of course, being the PvP area. We can see that way off in the distance. That's the road that stretches from west to east along Ashenvale in the distance there. You can see the clear blue skies off in the distance as well. And of course all the ruins leading up to Astronar, which is out that way somewhere. Let's jump down. Woohoo! Probably take falling damage. Yes, we did. And we'll cut through here. We'll go through these ruins. And we'll see if we can get back to Astronar that way. And listen to that, folks. Oh, bugger, we entered Hellscream's watch. Astronaut, maybe we'll get the music again. And there's Astronaut in the background. Oh, bugger, I stopped that. That was my fault. Um, that was the classic Night Elf Teldrassil slash Ashenvale music. One of my favorites. I love the soundtrack, as you know, in this game. It's just amazing. All right, looks like we'll come in from the eastern side of Astronaut rather than swimming across. And once again, folks, all of this area, a hotbed of PvP action on PvP servers back in the day. And I'd imagine now, if you are playing on a PvP server still, that this would still be a hotbed of action, PvP action, because, of course, it is a contested zone. That being that it's no doesn't belong to one or the other um, alliance or the horde factions. It's basically a shared zone. So having to fight for it. All right, and of course, this is why we got the Elune's tier. Seraphis, did you find the remains of the lake? Do you have the tier? Yes, we do. Oh, you found it. Odd, it looks tarnished somehow. I'll place it, uh, the tear in a stew and pray that will cure her. That's interesting. You're going to make a stew out of it. Thank you. Thank you, Seraphis. Let's see what happens. It says here, Paturus White Moon places the tear into a bowl of stew. Eat this, my daughter. It will help you feel better. Let's get rid of uh, Panda and Monk temporarily. There you go. Let's sit down, and of course X is the command for sitting, or you can type slash um, sit. All right, let's see what happened. It didn't work! Oh no! A sorrowful and resigned expression upon his face. Pelchurus removes the tear from the soup and gently washes it. The eruption of Thunder Peak must have affected it in some way. You must take the tear to the Moon Well of Purity, which still lies intact, protected by the Goddess's power, at the southeast base of southeast base of the volcano. There you will wash it within the sacred waters of a loon, and that's in a moon well. And of course, you know what they look like. What happens beyond that, I cannot say. I fear for my daughter's life. It is in your hands now, Seraphis. All right, so take the tear of a loon and rinse it in the waters of the moon well of purity in Ashen. Now, let's have a look on the map where that is okay so it's on the other side of the volcano this time on the eastern side and it looks like we'll be going into an area that we haven't explored yet and again hopefully now you're beginning to get an idea of the scale of this zone exactly how big it is it's just incredible isn't it and of course it's only a teeny weeny incy wincy part of the entire world of warcraft look at that what a picturesque site isn't it in fact let's take ourselves a little happy snap alt z to remove the uh, uh, UI and we'll get ourselves a nice little lined up background there classic shot in Astronar hitting print screen and there we go we'll post it up on tumblr or something like that right let's head ourselves into the inn where you can see we've got a hand in and another quest and as well as do you think you retrieved all of the troll charms from Thistlefur Hold if there are any left behind, the Thistlefur tribe will continue to be influenced by them and eventually will attack this place. Well, I'm not sure we got all of them there, Hephaestus. Sorry about that. Alright, he nods slowly as he looks at you straight in the eye. You've likely saved the Thistlefur fur from themselves, at least in the short run, if they can keep from stealing objects of power that don't belong to them, that is. I understand that the Night Elves are having problems with the other Furbolg tribe to the south. That's something that you that Rain is going to want to speak to you about. However, there are more immediate concerns that I would ask for your help with. Oh, okay, interesting. Let's have a look. The volcano threatens to engulf all of Ashenvale. Ooh, if we don't act quickly, act quickly. Let me assure you, this was no natural eruption. Okay, so perhaps we're going to find out exactly how that uh, volcano did come about. 
The volcano, um, what is it? My sister Sabina is powerful. She has gone east to the edge of Thunder Peaks lava flow, just north of the road, to enlist the aid of other elements against the Fire Lord that has caused this destruction. Okay, that's the answer that we were looking for, because of course the Fire Lord that he's referring to is Magmathon up the top there. Seraphis, go to her, that's Sabina, and give her what uh, give her what assistance you can. So speak with Sabrina Pilgrim at the southern edge of Thunder Peaks lava flow in Ashvel. By a common enemy. And there it is, you can see it up there. So we definitely need to go to that eastern side. Let's see what Rain Wolf Runner has for us. Dry air delivery. Ah, there you are, Seraphis. I've poured over the notes Tyronis has made, and it sounds like your next course of action is to find the other pieces of Dartol's rod. I would start by heading east along the road to Rainwood Tower. Oh, Rainwood Tower. Now, the keen people amongst you will remember that we pointed that out on our big journey. Be careful. Our journey, which was um, eastwards along this road. Rain's Tower was sort of midway around here somewhere. So that's where she's sending us. Um, yeah, Rainwood Tower, a dryad there named Sheldrin is better suited to guide you. Seek her out. Keep the gem with you. Sheldrin will need it if she's to help you recreate the rod. So we have to deliver the glowing gem to Sheldrin at Rainwood Tower yeah, well. in Ashenvale. And you'll see in our bags we've probably got a glowing gem. We've got Loon's Tear there. Where's the glowing gem? No, it's a moss agate. There it is. And that is a minor imperfections on the bottom of the gem. Reinforce the idea that it used to be fitted to something else. So we're probably trying to find the other parts of the rod to make some kind of thing. All right, food and drink vendor. Let's use good old Salomatic. Clear away our white stuff. We'll also get rid of some of the other things that we don't really need. Some gooey spider legs there. Melon juice, our old soul bound clarions call cloak. And the rest of this stuff is really AH fodder. So we'll pop it down here including the moss agate by the way and we'll put all of our quest items up here together so we can see them there's more ah fodder once we've smelted it we've got some wool there to make more woolen bandages and by the way i did do some first aiding uh when we were in darnassus off camera and you can see 131 out of 150 we can now make heavy wool bandages so i skilled up and learnt that new um, ability there heavy wool bandage and you can see i've popped them on the old health um, hot bar down the bottom here and they give us 301 damage uh, rather heal 301 damage over seven seconds all right and we've got the other tiers of cloth here we've got linen cloth we've got wool cloth and of course good old silk cloth which we'll be using later on Okay, that's that. Might also just pop over the road to the other building over there where I can see there's Zyander. You can see that there's an anvil symbol there. That means that there's a repair person in here. And of course, it's always good to repair up whenever possible so our gear doesn't break. Here we go. Bit of repairs. One silver. Easy peasy. All right, so now we've got some choices to make. What do we do? Do we pop down here to uh, the... I think we will actually pop down to the archaeological dig site and then I think what we'll do is we'll go over to the eastern side of the lava there and we'll hand in all of these quests and try and get the tier of a loon cleansed and we'll speak with Sabina Pilgrim at uh, the southern edge of the lava flow there but first things first let's head southwards we haven't been south we'll follow the road south and go down to this dig site here and we'll do some archaeology because that definitely needs to be leveled up as we cross the river there should be a southward fork in the road according to the map coming up and there we go you can actually see it on our mini map as well and there we go we've got yeah a signpost and it's saying Stone Talon Mountains are this way. And of course, this is how we do get to the Stone Talon Mountains, which is the next zone you can see there underneath Ashenvale, to the south of Ashenvale. And we've got that Hero's Call quest, which is pointing us in the right direction, taking us there. Of course, we're not going to actually do that right now. We'll leave that there to remind us that we need to do it later. What we're after right now are dig sites. And you can see these fantastic looking night elf statues. I'm guessing that the... Um, artifacts are going to be around these old ruins as we come into the zone there we go the ruins of stardust and yay discovered them and you can see we've got ourselves a bit of a green glow around the place and now we're in these ruins we'll be able to actually um, do the archaeology here so here we go a what is this a shader thicket rain caller we'll just clear these guys out of the way they are level 23 so they are going to give us xp which is great we need to target something first 
And if you have a look on the map, by the way, you can see this is quite an interesting area. Uh, although it's covered by the dig site, it's actually uh, an island on a lake. It's quite cool. Whoops, I meant to minimize that. Very cool music as well. Love, love, love all this. There you go, you can see there's an island on the lake out there. Now, let's do the old surveying. Once again, of course, archaeology at the moment, we've got 20 out of 30 fragments, and we want to get 30 out of 30 so we can solve this very first artifact here. And once again, even if it doesn't do anything, it tells you a lot about the lore of the place. And, uh, you know, it's just a fantastic profession to take up. It's free. Can't see why you wouldn't. And you also get lots of cool little goodies. So you know how it works. We just use our survey tool. We'll see where it points us and how far away. Okay, so yellow in that direction. I'm guessing it's going to be over on the island. Now, don't forget too, folks, sometimes artifacts can be, you can see some down the bottom there. They're not actual artifacts, but all sorts of junk and old relics at the bottom of the lakes. Sometimes there are all sorts of cool things underwater. Blizzard definitely do put a lot of work into the underwater stuff, so don't discount it. All right, it's saying it's just along here somewhere. And look at these sparkly trees i think that um they're used in a quest later on by the way oops wrong button here we go let's survey and see what pops up oh look at that one has popped up immediately let's grab that hope the hope that this rain caller doesn't oh oh it did it got us before we got a chance i hope that that artifact doesn't just oh no we did get it we did get it thank goodness so i'm not sure how long they are in the world for before they just despawn yikes and he's cast thunder on us Doing lots of nasty damage there, and of course we can't move out of the way of it as well. So we've got ourselves some Night Elf Archaeology Fragments, we got three of them. So if we have a look now, yeah, Lightning Cloud, that was nasty. If we have a look at the Archaeology and click on Night Elf, you can see 23 out of 30. So we just need seven more before we can actually solve that artifact. Very cool. Good old sound of clear casting, you can see it pop down in the scrolling combat text there. Right, let's survey once again. Use our survey tool. And it's saying it's miles away over in that direction. Okay, I think it could be off the island this time, perhaps. We'll soon find out. Clear the way. Alright, so let's run this way a bit. We'll probably swim across the water, I'd say. We'll do another survey just as we get to the edge here of the island. Alright, so yeah, it's staying a bit closer now. There's some old bones under the water, some fish swimming around, and of course, this is a lake, so you know what that means. We don't have to have a fishing quest to be able to fish at any particular point in time. We can just equip our fishing gear down here, and there we go. We can fish as long as we're high enough skilled. You can see that the skill level for this is the Ruins of Stardust, 150, and our current skill is a hundred and what is it 116 because we've got a buff that means we won't catch a fish every single time but we will be able to fish in it, it just means we'll fish up more junk so don't forget about fishing by the way because like i said even if you find it boring it gets some amazing benefits later on you're able to get some really cool fish fish up some really cool stuff and of course be able to use that fish to make some awesome food as well which will save your bacon later on in instance runs, etc, etc. So here we go, fishing and archaeology, hunting. Take a screenshot there in the beautiful Ashenvale Forest. So relaxing, I just love it personally. Also because I do love fishing in real life. Anyway, I'm sure you guys won't. We'll fish one more, we'll try and get our skill up to 114. Then we'll finish off the episode with finding that archaeology fragments, or the other two of them. I know we're going to run slightly out of time. We're already near the end of the episode. Gosh, time just goes so fast playing well. Half an hour just seems like five minutes. Seriously, absolutely incredible. All right, there we go, 114. Let's quickly switch back to our combat clothes, do another survey. Well, no, we got aggroed. Yeah, so we'll freeze, and of course, you know what we'll do? We'll blink, get out of the way, and then cast a nice long frost bolt at him. And then a nice long fireball as well, doing heaps and heaps of damage. And then our arcane missiles. There you go. You can see there with that new talent, by the way, uh, the arcane missiles go absolutely bonkers. In fact, let's you know, let's do another survey first, and I'll show you the arcane missiles uh, change that's happened. All right, maybe it's nearby here somewhere, by the way. There it is. Now remember, folks, you can get three digs out of a site. 
and we've got two more fragments there. If we have a look, you'll be able to see how our progress is going. There we go, 25 out of 30. Two um, out of the three digs available to us, so we want to try and do one more survey. Let's do that. Okay, it's saying it's all the way back over here, and it's quite a way away because the light on it is red. As we hold our breath and swim under the lake, And up the other side. All right, let's do another survey. Oh, this one's miles away. Okay, let me show you the arcane missiles, by the way. So let's do some damage on these guys and hope that arcane missile procs. No, it's not going to. Of course, when we really want it, it doesn't proc. There it is. Right, now we'll open with the arcane missiles on this guy. Watch how quickly they fire out. Look at that. Bang, 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 bang. Heaps of them. Down to basically one third health, that mob. So yeah, it's really important, I believe, that talent because uh, it just makes your arcane missiles such a formidable uh, weapon against these guys. Here we are, we'll use them again. Of course, such a long range as well. Look at all of them there. Absolutely amazing, isn't it? Heaps of damage. Once again, almost down to a third health for him. I need a target. All right, let's do another survey, see if we're getting any closer. Yes, we are. Okay, so it's turned yellow, so we are getting closer. I'm going to guess it's sort of over at the edge of the island, or perhaps nearby one of these pillars. All right, maybe it's the pillars. We'll do another survey down here. And there we go. And how many fragments does that give us? Three. All right, let's have a look. We're, oh, look at that, just too shy of solving that particular um, uh, piece there. Oh dear, never mind. We'll get it next time. Right, let's have a look at the old map now. Where do we need to head? Because we're not going to go hand in that hero's call yet. So we need to head to the northeast up to the uh, eastern side of the new lava flow coming out of that new volcano. All the fault of Magtherian or whatever his name was. I can't remember now. The big fire lord at the top of that mountain. That's where we're headed for the next episode. Unbelievable how fast time flies when you're having fun in WoW. It's just amazing. Let's get rid of this guy before we sign out for the day. Good old clear cast sound. Love that sound. And quickly dispatched of him. But hey, what prettier place to log out than these ruins. So I certainly hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Let's have a quick recap of what we did. Of course, we went north of Astronar up into the Thistle Fir Den. Well, that's where we started off. Then we came down and went to this new area here on the side of the um, volcano where the lake used to be. And of course, we picked up a loon's tear. Went back to Astronar, handed in those quests, and then got sent out off to the eastern side of the volcano. And then, of course, leveled up our archaeology skill around here at the dig site. You can see that that is now, if we hit P, go to Professions. Whoops, are we going to get attacked? We are. Hit Professions. That got leveled up to, where are we, Archaeology. We're now up to level 10 for our Archaeology. 10 out of 75. So, of course, unless you're concentrating on it fully and doing a lot of traveling, it's a lot easier to do once you get yourself a mount, by the way. Uh, it's going to take you a while. But, hey, my theory is you might as well start early and get it out of the way. All right, folks, that's it from us. On behalf of myself, Sambo, and the wonderful level 29 Worgen Mage, Seraphis, it's us saying ta-ta. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. We'll see you next time. And Bye-bye.